Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and as many of you probably know by now, one of my favorite ways to pass time is to review the latest and greatest network attached storage devices on the market. And the subject of today's video is another pretty unique piece of hardware from a brand new company called ZetLab. They're putting together their own fancy line of NAS storage solutions that promise some pretty bold features, and the prototype unit we have here is actually based on an 8-core Rockchip RK3588 ARM chipset. And for better or for worse, ZetLab's claim to fame for their new lineup is the inclusion of even more AI features than you probably ever asked to see in a NAS. But wait, don't click away just yet because they've done a lot more than just slap ChatGPT on it and call it a day. So let's go ahead and talk about what ZetLab is trying to do different in the NAS market. And ZetLab did graciously send out this prototype unit for us to take a look at, but keep in mind that since it's a prototype, there can and definitely will be some hardware changes between this unit unit here and the final model that actually goes to retail. Either way, inside the box, ZetLab packs this NAS very well, along with a kind little note explaining the background of their company. And of course, you also get the NAS itself, along with this little accessories box, which includes all the cords you'll need to run the NAS. And I feel like the ZetLab D6, even in its prototype form, is a really nice little unit, sporting six 3.5 inch SATA hard drive bays and one M.2 NVMe slot, all encased in a very classy aluminum housing that I think looks really unique without going overboard. You can also see how it looks with the LED accent lights and the screen turned on on the front. And on the front of the NAS, you'll get this magnetic grill that you can remove to reveal the six 3.5 inch SATA hard drive bays. And each of these bays feel pretty high quality with a mechanism that allows you to pull the tray apart and slot your drive in. Then you just push the tray back together to secure the drive. And down below, you're going to find a pair of SD card slots, a micro SD card slot, a USB 3 type C port, and a USB 3 type A port, along with a copy button, which works with a cool software feature that will actually automate copying files from external storage plugged into any of these ports onto the hard drives of the NAS. Around the back is where you'll find all of your other useful I.O., like a pair of Ethernet ports, both 1 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit, two more USB type A 2.0 ports, an HDMI port, and finally a DC power input. Here you can also see the ventilation that draws in cool air from the front of the NAS and sends it out the back. But if you'd like, you can also snap on this included magnetic mesh to the back, which I think looks really clean. And as I alluded to earlier, this whole NAS is running on the Rockchip RK3588, which is a relatively recent 8-core ARM chipset, and that makes the ZetLab NAS the first NAS we've tested here with a high-end ARM SoC rather than the embedded x86 processors that we're used to seeing in this class of device. The Rockchip should hopefully bring lower power consumption and less heat output at the expense of just a little bit of performance. So with all of that out of the way, we went ahead and plugged this thing into power so we could get started with our evaluation. And the very first thing we noticed here was just how nice this little 3.5 inch LCD display on the front of this NAS is. Once the unit boots up and gets a network connection, it'll actually show you the current IP address assigned to the NAS, along with the usage of your CPU, memory, and storage. And honestly, now that I've seen this in a NAS, I feel like this should be a standard feature everywhere, since it's just so much easier to take a quick glance over at it and see the IP address right there, rather than using a piece of software on your computer to find the NAS on the network. Now, if you've ever seen me review a NAS, you'll know that my favorite topic always ends up being the kind of software that ships with these devices, since just about every company is rolling their own solution, and sometimes they pull it off really, really well, but other times, not so well. And in the case of the ZetLab D6, it's kind of hard to say much at this point since their software is still in alpha right now, and most of the exciting features are currently exciting promises. But I'll do my best to cover everything I've been able to test so far. I will give ZetLab credit for some very nicely designed UI. I think the process of making a storage pool and setting up Jellyfin was easier on here than it has been on any other NAS that we've tested. And something else that's pretty neat for those of you that have a lot of personal data to keep track of on your NAS is the inclusion of various AI features that make it a little more natural to interact with your data. By default, ZOS will analyze your files and their metadata to create its own sort of database full of things like photo descriptions, video transcripts, EXIF data from a camera, and other little snippets of information it can extract from your files. You can see if this process has happened to a file in the files window, where any item that has been scanned will show an AI status of learned. Once you have some learned files, you can try interacting with this data by using the ZAI app on the NAS. 
And here you can basically search through your files by making natural language requests, and the NAS will try to give you a list of results that matches your query. We tested this with a few of our own YouTube videos that we uploaded locally to the NAS, and you can actually just ask it to find a video related to that topic, and the NAS will use the transcript it generated for that video to determine that it's related and show it in the search results, which is pretty cool. If you really have a lot of data to keep track of, I could see why this would be a useful feature. But of course, there are a couple of caveats with this on the D4 and D6 models of the NAS specifically which is the fact that the AI chat and document scanning features of the NAS don't actually run on the NAS. Instead, you're supposed to download their desktop software, and then it's going to run on your CPU or hopefully later down the road your GPU if you have a compatible card, and it's going to use the data from the NAS along with the data from the LLM that you're running on your machine to give more useful feedback on all of the questions that you ask the NAS. But if you want these LLMs to run on the NAS itself, you're going to have to upgrade to the D6 Ultra or D8 Ultra, which are both equipped with a much faster Core 5 Ultra 125H. And those are actually capable of running these LLM models directly on the NAS if you wish to do so. Performance in all of the applications that we tried on this NAS was also perfectly acceptable. Uh, to make a massive generalization, the RK3588 is about 20% slower on average in both single-threaded and multi-threaded workloads than the Intel N100. But in the case of the ZLab D6, it gives us more than enough horsepower to run things like Jellyfin, Home Assistant, Transmission, and plenty more altogether thanks to the 16GB of soldered LPDDR4X memory. And I had no problem streaming 4K movies while running all of these other tasks on the NAS, so for hosting a media collection, the D6 can work just fine. Outside of that, as it tends to go with these newer NAS products, there are many other features that have been promised with their ZOS interface that, at this point, just haven't actually been added. Like, for example, a full Docker front end, virtual machines, SSH access, and a lot of other media organization stuff like a dedicated photo gallery or movie front end. Now to be fair, I think the third-party apps they provide in their app store are pretty sufficient for most of the tasks that you would want to do with a device like this. And I did confirm that Jellyfin does actually run in a Docker container, so their OS has some kind of Docker runtime, they just haven't made a full user interface to let you download and run other containers outside of the ones they've published on their app store. Speaking of which, according to ZLab, ZOS is running on Debian Linux, which is a personal favorite of mine that I'm all too happy to see in a product like this. Debian is stable, has very strong community backing, and they usually only push very high quality packages and updates. ZLab has also personally promised me that SSH access and support for installing third-party operating systems are planned for next year, but because I can't SSH into this NAS, I can't make any comments related to kernel modifications, other services that might be running in the background, or do more in-depth performance analysis or anything like that, which is really disappointing to me, and I can see why it would be a point of contention for a lot of people. So I can really only hope that ZLab will follow through with their promises here. And the last disclaimer that always has to be brought up with these kinds of products is the issue of crowdfunding. Now, as I write this, ZLab has just launched their Kickstarter campaign, and they blew through their initial funding goal, but as with any Kickstarter campaign, your pledge is a donation to their project, and there's no solid guarantee that the product will ever actually show up at your door. Now, I can say for certain that I at least have a ZLab NAS. They had to make a case for it and PCBs and write all the software, so obviously they have the capacity to build a product and sell them. But more importantly, ZLab seems very open about these NASs to their community. Just scrolling through their Discord server to see some engineers and employees responding directly to questions from regular people was really reassuring. And if you have any questions about these NASs outside of what we covered, you're encouraged to go to their Discord or any of their other social media platforms and do the same. So overall, I'm really excited to see yet another player in the NAS market, and I think ZLab is bringing some pretty unique things to the table. But they're really going to have to deliver on all of their promises leading up to the launch of this NAS in order to set themselves apart as a really attractive option in a market with a whole lot of really attractive options. I'll leave a link to ZLab's Kickstarter campaign down in the description below if you want to go support them, and I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful in showing off some of the things that are going to make the ZLab NAS really stand out. So if you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content, and as always, have an awesome day.